potatoes. We put about three gallons of broth. A little over 20 pounds of potatoes. A little over three pounds of onion. We got this big old pan of meat right here. Pork chicken we're gonna grind up and put in it. Now we fixed to get into the fun part to stir it and taste it. We got about eight quarts of tomatoes, eight cans of cream style corn. We got to put it in just a little bit. <coughs> you ain't gonna get away from me. <laughs> Daddy's fixing to put a quarter of ketchup in the stew. Well, Daddy's done put a pound of butter and a pound of cheese in the stew. All that's left is put a little milk in there just by the time it gets done. Well, now we're having the final taste test. Thumbs up. Hey guys, welcome back to Hound Hogs Barbecue. I'm Blake. What you just watched is actually really special video footage of my granddad making a Brunswick stew. This was my family's attempt at recording this recipe. And so for today's recipe, I actually had to go back about two years ago and dive through that footage to try to figure out the recipe, but I think I've got it figured out. So let's get to it. All right, so first things first, Everything in a traditional Brunswick stew is ground. Um, the reason for that is you typically would make a 25, 30 gallon pot and you don't want to spend all that time dicing. And so we're going to start by peeling our potatoes and then we're going to actually run these through a grinder here in a few minutes. So this is about two and a half pounds of potatoes. Um, depending on what size pot you've got, you're going to want to do about equal parts potatoes to meat. And so that's pre uh, trim weight is two and a half pounds of potatoes. All right, so we want to make sure these are small enough to get down in our grinder. There's our potatoes ready to be ground. All right, so here's our meat for today. So we've got a pork tenderloin. We've got some leftover chicken thighs that are boneless and skinless. And as you can tell by this ugly looking brisket, this came out of the freezer. Traditionally, a Brunswick stew, you can throw anything into it because it's supposed to be the leftovers out of your fridge all thrown together to make a stew. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just kind of cut this up to make sure it fits through the grinder because we're gonna grind this as well. And you can use whatever combination of meat that you've got. My suggestion would be that as you're cooking, to just hold on to some stuff, to leave it in a Ziploc bag, um, and just keep your leftovers, and then use it all to make a stew. All right, so this is our handy KitchenAid mixer. It's perfect for doing a small batch of stew. Part of the reason why we grind it is because if you're doing a big batch, uh, it's just gonna be a lot faster just to run everything through a grinder than sitting there trying to dice it into the right size pieces and things like that. So we're gonna run our meat through just one time, and then we're gonna run our potatoes through, and then we're gonna get this thing cooking. All right, so that's it for grinding. It was super simple. Took probably about three to four minutes total. Uh, you really wanna have at least equal parts potatoes and meat. We got a little bit extra meat today. We might have some left over, uh, but that's it. Let's get this stuff in the pot and start cooking. So we wanna start off with a real low heat with this aluminum pot that I've got. It'll scald pretty quickly. Traditionally, you would use cast iron. I don't have cast iron and cast iron ain't cheap. We're gonna use just a regular pot today. Throw in your stick of butter. And then go ahead and add in all your onions. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to get some color on these onions. Kind of start caramelizing them a little bit. And then we'll move pretty quick through this part because we don't want to burn them. So with Brunswick stew, there's really no rules. Some people put beans in there. Some people don't. Some people use brisket. Some people don't put any meat in there at all. Totally up to you. Now granddaddy back in the day, what he would do is he'd have his 25 gallon cast iron pot. 
and in the bottom he would put a nail. He'd just drop a nail down in the bottom and he would use his boat oar and he would sit there and stir that nail around to break all that stuff up off the bottom. Said the nail made it taste better, I don't know. Getting a little bit of color on our butter now. My dad's coming by to get some of this today. All right, so now that we're getting a little color on our... Two hours later. Apparently I've never opened a thing of sausage before. One of the big things about Brunswick stew is you want to keep scraping the bottom. That's where that good flavor is going to come from. It'll loosen up here in a little bit when we add our broth. Now this today is going to be a very meat heavy because we're barbecue guys around here. So if you don't want that much meat, just don't add it. But it's perfect for taking leftover brisket, leftover pork butt, you know, whatever, and adding it in here. So starting this stew off, that beginning, when you're doing the onions with the butter and getting that sausage in there, it's very crucial because if you burn those onions, you're going to have to start over. You're going to have to get you an extra onion and you, you're going to be mad. Once you get just a little bit of color in there, don't let it go too long, then you add that sausage in and that sausage is going to help pull that stuff off the bottom, get that extra fat in there to keep it from burning. And that's a good looking start to a stew. All right, so we got good color on our sausage. We're going to add our potatoes in. As you can see, they started to brown. Uh, oxidized, but that's okay. Nobody's ever going to see them. We're going to add these in and our broth. These potatoes are going to help thicken this stew. Now for our broth, we're going to add a whole 32 ounce box of chicken stock. You can use broth if you want. I like the richer flavor of stock. Now granddaddy, he would have made his own stock by boiling the chicken that he was going to use in the stew, but I don't believe in boiling chicken like that. So uh, if anything's going to change in this recipe, I'm going to take the meat game up a little bit. We're going to do half a box, a 32 ounce box, so about 16 ounces of beef stock. Now you want to keep this on hand because if it gets a little thick, you can add some extra later. And so now what we're going to do, we're going to keep stirring. When you got a Brunswick stew, you can't walk away from it. You got to keep stirring and we're going to cook until our potatoes are cooked and thickened and then we'll keep adding our ingredients all right so it's a little thicker than i want it right now uh, it just depends on how starchy your potatoes are i'm going to go ahead and add the rest of this beef stock in there it'll thin up when we add our tomatoes too but it just didn't look right you know what i'm saying there we go that looks better all right so we've got it thickened it's boiling pretty good you want to make sure your potatoes are cooked most of the way through take a sample with a spoon and try it so now we're going to add in our tomatoes now you at home can probably use some of these crushed tomatoes from the store i actually have some tomatoes out of the garden and so we're going to get this thing popped open Oop. got that on camera Oh. All right, so now that I made a mess, so just take these, mm-hmm, good old garden tomatoes. You want to use crushed tomatoes, add a little bit of texture in there. Now you want to add about eight ounces of ketchup. This is a 12 or 14 ounce bottle, so about two thirds of this. And we're going to add one can of cream, cream style corn. You can use whatever kind of corn you like. Now we're getting that good color in here, that red Brunswick stew color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cook this through. It's super important with the Brunswick stew is you never stop stirring. If you've got a big pot that you're doing and you're having to use a boat oar, you need to make sure you got a team of people to help you because you're gonna be stirring for a while. So we'll give it about another 10, 15 minutes stirring this way, let it all cook in what we've added so far. Then we're gonna add the meat and all we gotta do then is just heat it through real good and we'll be done. All right, so we're boiling real good. We can tell everything's cooked through. You can see we're getting that nice, good color from those tomatoes now. Let's go ahead and add our meat in. Now, you just want to add it as much as you want of it. Oh, yeah, going to be meaty. Granddaddy wouldn't have put this much meat in there, but he wasn't a barbecue guy. So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it just like that. So it is. It's about equal parts potatoes to meat. You see I got that much meat left. Had a little bit more in the pan than... uh originally so now we just got to heat it through all right so before we finish off we need to add a little salt and pepper in here you need just salt to taste i'm going to add a little bit of extra black pepper because i like black pepper all right now we got it like we want it so i'm going to cut the heat off now what we're going to do is we're going to add some cheese this is one block of sharp cheddar cheese it's hot enough to melt it so we don't have to keep the heat on 
All righty, so the last thing, once you've got the heat off and you kind of cooled down just a little bit, go ahead and add you a cup, uh, about eight ounces of milk in here. Got to use the whole milk and get that stirred in for that extra creaminess. All right, well, she's done. It's time to eat. It's raining, which makes this the perfect day for a Brunswick stew. I don't feel no rain. Well, movie magic. Try not to clank those around. Sorry, you told me not to, so I had to. Now there's only one proper way to eat a Brunswick stew, and that is with Ritz crackers and Cholula's hot sauce. What's up? We're shooting up the finishing of our video here. Now, Zach, you made this at a steak competition one time. Yes, I did. I made up a whole story and everything about where the recipe came from. I lied. All right, you ready to give it a shot? All right. You know how it tastes? Brisket. There's brisket in there. There's brisket in there. This is one of those things you could just eat the whole pot of it. You want to try? As well. Well, it smells good. Man, that's good stuff. <laughs> it is good. Tastes anything like granddaddy's? A little better. A little better? <laughs> I don't think granddaddy ever smoked a brisket to put in there, so. All right, guys. So if you're looking for a traditional Brunswick stew recipe, uh, it's pretty old. This is it. It's nice and simple and it makes a lot of food. And if you want to make a big pot, all you got to do is scale it up. You got anything that? You're about done with your bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working all morning. I was waiting on this. All right, guys. Well, as always, we want to encourage you to turn those ideas into realities. Get out there and cook something new. We'll catch you next time.